Welcome back to another one guys. Um, in today's video we're doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be setting up a Corridorus gold laser breeding tank just here behind me. Um, it was just a tank that I had for the utility room so I thought I'd use it in here. Um, we've made a little bit of like a homemade filter on it. I used to use these quite a lot with like but in bigger plant pots in just slightly bigger tanks but I don't use them anymore. Just sort of everything sponge filters or the breeding tanks have got externals on them as well. I'll just flip the camera around and show you what we're working with at the moment. So here it is. I'm only going to be able to see this portion of the tank. It's 112 litre, I think it is. But it's just a pump made out of a plant pot there. Um, I just filled it with some coarse foam at the bottom surrounding the, the pump and then filled it with uh, alpha grog. Half stifled, half new alpha grog and that's a piece of bogwood from another tank. Probably going to put a couple of sponge filters in here and then just a, a layer of gravel and sand together. There's a 3 watt pump inside here with a piece of 10 mil pipe attached to it. But I think it does about 300 litres an hour, which is enough, but you probably wouldn't want this in a tank with lots of fish in it and plecos and stuff like that. But just because there's going to be six gold laser quarries in here, I think it's alright. As this filtration, it'll be getting lots of water changes. There'll be some live plants in there as well, like some popos and some anubias, which I'll take from this plant, this tank here. I think it's looking quite neglected at the moment. Because I took the bristle nose out. Funny the amount of work a bristle nose would actually put into a tank. Like this one has one in. Closer to the light. Well, it's a very same distance. That one. Yeah, let's pull out some of these plants, get some gravel in the tank and I'll set it up and show you how I've had success breeding them in the past. So, yeah, that's how the pump's attached. Just do a piece of 8mm pipe straight down into the pot. Just boiling up some old media I had outside, just in tubs. Um, the two black sponges would go either side of the filter at the bottom and then it would be covered over the top bit with the uh, floss and then the, the oh, off. biological media will go over the top bit of it and they're just some rocks from a tank, a bit of a coconut cave there and I made these yesterday spawning mops. Haven't bothered them um, really trying to breed Corridorus for a, a long time but I'm going to try my hand with the gold lasers and see how far we can get. And then if it's successful and they do want to continue spawning I will put them into the tubs I've made outside for the summer and I'll probably show you a little bit of them a bit further on in the video. Right, back to the Corridorus tank. Okay, so we've just prepared some bits. These are the Anubias from the Ivan Akara tank. Nana Pinto. There's some Kirin there. There's some Mini there. We've just got an old, pretty much eaten coconut shell. And then we've got the gravel and sand mixture. I always find my quarries do pretty well on, and it's the mixture of most of my tanks. And then we've got the breeding mop, homemade breeding mops. Haven't used them for a long time, so I ended up just knocking up some new ones the other day. Boiled them and then 
being the North properly, they're made out of 100% acrylic wool. You don't want to be using normal wool for making your spawning mops. I'm not completely sure what it does to the water, but it causes some sort of bacteria in there from the growth on the wall. I'm not too sure. So yeah, they're the little pieces we've got. For the gold laser corridors breeding tank. I'm gonna get them in now. And then I'll give you a look of what it looks like once it's full, and it's been aquascaped for breeding. Okay, so I've just popped in the Anubius and spawning mops and some more biological media that's seasoned from the, the Robinia, Robinia, however you say it, Corridorus filter. And just here we've got spawning mops that will sink a little bit more as I fill the water up. So I'm going to go and grab some of their water from the other tank, pop some of that in there, and then I'll come back when, I'm, when I've got the corries in there. The haze in the water will clear, just, uh, just added some more beneficial bacteria to it, so it should clear up soon. Right, let's go and get these corries out. I'll try and show you the gold lasers before I completely stress them all out and get them out of the tank. That green phantom, absolutely stunning fish that one. A couple more of them in there. In there, on the back, there's actually six in here, so I'm just going to get to pulling them out now. Right, so I've just got the Corridoras out of their tank. Excuse the wind and the mess in the garden. She's been doing quite a bit of work in the garden. Just thought I'd show you guys the tubs that I was talking about. Essentially putting some Corries in or, or something this year. Not yet, obviously. The, the water temperature inside the tubs is only about 8 degrees at the moment. But once it gets up to, sort of, I guess... 15, 16s overnight, it'd be absolutely fine just to stick a little heater in there just to keep it up to 23, 24 degrees and then obviously the temperature peaks in the daytimes. You can only really do this in England for probably two months of the year but it's well worth it. I just need to get a fine mesh box to stick over this bit because obviously anything that hits that pipe is either going to get stuck against it or sucked straight through it. And this is a similar setup filter to the other tank you just seen in the fish room. Obviously, this one's just got a much more powerful pump in it being fed. I think it's a maybe like a thousand liters an hour or something like this. You know, two 100 liter butts. But yeah, let's uh, get putting these quarries in the tank. They're just floating at the moment, acclim acclimating to the tank water temperature. These guys have been floating for about probably about 45 minutes now, probably a bit longer than they needed to. I've already added half of the tank water from this tank into the tub with them. That ends up just going to make them some food whilst I was doing this. But yeah, they look pretty ready to go now. They were looking a, a fair bit more stressed out than they were now earlier. To be honest, I thought there was something wrong with them. They went really, really pale, but I don't know why. They're all looking good now, so we'll get these guys released into the tank. And I'll come back and show you them in a couple of hours or something like that. And guys released. Took out quite a bit of muck from their old tanks and mould that kicked up when I was catching them, but you know that won't hurt. 
Oops, I can end that too. So they're looking good, and we'll come back on checking them in probably, yeah, one or two hours. Okay, so as you just saw there, um, the quarries look pretty happy in their new tank. That was just after 25, 30 minutes being in there or something. Um, it's actually the next day now. But I'm just going to round this video off here. as That's pretty much all I've got to show until they actually spawn again, which I predict probably be in about a week or maybe two weeks' time. They spawned three days ago, but the eggs were eaten as they were laid pretty much, which I should have got some footage of that. But we'll come back and check on these guys next time and I'll do a progress report on them. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.